how you came to cooking. Well, um, you know, I studied film in school, and that was a long time ago. But then uh, I needed a job, and I was working in film production, but um, sort of landed a, a nighttime dishwashing slash plating job at a, a little French bistro in San Francisco. Mm. And I really just I loved it right away. And the woman who was the chef was like, "Wow, well, you have a pretty good palate." And they kind of kept throwing more, more assignments stuff at on you. me. And then I pretty much took over as the chef. It was a small place, um, but a month later. Yeah. And then, um, and then from there, I went to work at a, at a fine dining restaurant called Masa's under Julian Serrano, because um, I had been cooking at the little bistro, and I thought, you know, I need to learn more. I started in the pastry side, mm -hmm. then I went to work for Tracy Desjardins, and that was great. And I, I learned a ton with Tracy. That's probably my biggest culinary influence. Mm. Did you cook as a kid, or were you? Is it something that you came to later? Well, actually, my mom is a really good cook, and um, I always made really. I would say different things for us all the time. We, we watched Julia Child together and I'm very fond of my mom making souffle. I remember a couple times she would make a souffle. Her parents were, I think they all had sweet tooth because I remember a lot of pies and cookies and my, my grandfather used to make um, peanut brittle and caramel corn and it was yeah. amazing. So I did and I, and I actually started baking pretty young. So I, mm -hmm. I did make cakes and I, um, I certainly was, I had this obsession over chocolate chip cookies where I, where I really thought, you know, I can I think I can make a better recipe than this Toll House thing on right. the back of the package. And, um, but it also it was the Mrs. Fields era and the David's Cookies in New York and I was like putting all those thoughts together and trying to come mm. up with a better recipe. So I would cook for my, bake for my friends in the middle of lunch right. break in high school and we'd come home and make chocolate chip cookies and run back to a student council meeting and Lucky friends. thoroughly enjoy <laughs> them. Yeah. And so what are we cooking today? Tell me a little bit about the recipe you're going to be making. Well, this is um, actually my mom's uh, noodles. It's in my most recent cookbook called Cooking Off the Clock. That's right. Such as this book right here, <laughs> Cooking Off the Clock. Uh -huh. And uh, it's something that she always makes um, during the holidays, often mm. at Thanksgiving and Christmas time. And they're just homemade noodles, but they're really uh, enriched by cream and eggs. Mm. And uh, I decided to kind of ramp them up a little bit. Wonderful. Will you show us the steps? Absolutely. So we are going to make my mom's uh, noodles with some chicken and a little cipollini, onion, carrot, and peas. So what I'm starting with is a cup and a half of flour, and then uh, about a teaspoon of baking powder, and then I have just a pinch of salt in here. I'm gonna enrich it with a little bit of egg. So I've got two eggs here, half a cup of cream. This one actually is a little richer with the cream. So I'm just getting this going in a bowl here, and then you wanna turn it out. This one, you, can, you kinda just wanna bring it together, knead it a few times, and then I would just wrap it and let it rest for 30 minutes to an hour, or you could chill it overnight. And then I have um, just a little bit of semolina and flour together. 50% flour and 50% semolina, because I feel like the semolina gives it a little sandy texture to, to, it makes it easier to roll things out and keep the noodles separate. About, really about almost a half an inch. Okay, so then we just cut these into strips. You can use a, a pasta roller cutter too, instead of your fancy Japanese knife. I would let these rest after I've rolled them out for a good 30 minutes and kind of dry out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is uh, turn on a pot back here. I'll start with some olive oil in the pan and I'll put my onions in and my carrots. So I just wanna get the onions and carrots sweat, sweating a little bit. to cook the pasta separately. You just dump it all in here. This little extra flour on here and the noodles themselves kind of just thicken the broth and make it nice and hearty. So those are just going to take a minute to cook. Pasta's done when it starts floating like this and you know it's bobbing up. It's just not the same if you don't make your own noodles, right? <laughs> And then just for the fun of it, I have some black truffle, which is absolutely not necessary, but can't hurt. This is my mom's pimped up noodles. <laughs> this is my mom's noodle dish, but <laughs> a little more over the top. No, these are my mom's noodles, and I've kind of just amped them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 